Hi everyone, uh, welcome on board. I think today is different, right? I mean, uh, we had planned a session on uh, on uh, or digital lending, uh, whatever recommendations were accepted. And uh, during the session today, uh, whatever an hour back or half an hour back, uh, RBI has also come back and uh, told exactly. Uh, I mean, whatever was given as an input has now come up with a with a full scale uh, uh, sort of uh, guidelines as well. So. Uh, I've not had enough time to uh, go through item by item, but what I can tell you is that it is the same as what we had discussed about. Um, so it is not much of change. They had uh, an extra one where they were talking about what they have fully accepted. They have completely accepted. So I think guidelines are aligned, so there should not be any dispute or issue. There's a minor uh, issue in terms of FLD. I wouldn't say minor, but uh, I think it was unknown how they, when they said securitization, what was the meaning of securitization and what we came today on securitization, both are unknown. And I have no answers to that as well. So uh, if you were to ask, ask me if LDG will work or not, I think it's very difficult to answer because uh, the way it has been written now is very, very complicated. Again, um, uh, we are linking uh, to things which we are, which uh, at least in this context, people don't know, but it still come up, right? So what we will do is uh, we will go through the, the guidelines and understand what it is. Uh, and uh, we'll I'll I'll sort of pause in between. Uh, look, I'm not from RBI, so I don't know everything. But uh, since we have been in the market talking a lot to various people, we will try to uh, give us our perspective on it, also the implications of it. But again, uh, the document is, is is not very complicated. It's easy to read. I think it's been made for uh, maybe faster reading on on anybody's side. So I think we'll be happy. Uh, it will be good if you guys can also uh, uh, sort of uh, go through the deck documents, make it uh, sort of uh, uh, understood by you as well. Because a lot of times, what we think is that only uh, only somebody else in somebody some other ecosystem can run. I can't. Uh, so I just give you a quick view that why I said so that it's available. So uh, an hour back, uh, this is which is as of now uh, on second of September, which is today. RBI has come back with the guidelines, and it is just communicating that was whatever I said uh, in 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 this uh, circular. All of that was which was there in lecture one has been completely uh, agreed and accepted. Now I'll talk about lecture one in the deck itself. Uh, interesting part here was also that uh, uh, they have come back and saying that it is applicable immediately. So if you look at it, what it says is that uh, this circular will be applicable to existing customers availing fresh loans, which means anybody uh, uh, any customer you already have and you are you are doing uh, fresh loans to them there is no escape you have to follow these guidelines they also said that any new customer getting on board and has to follow it now so it is not uh, fixed in future uh, it is as of now to ensure that however in, in order to ensure that smooth transition res will be given time 30th of november this is only for existing digital loans, which are not falling, uh, going through the same guidelines. So if you already have a load, uh, the loans on your platform, you can actually take some time to fix it, but any new loan given to the current customer or any new loan given or any new customer coming on board in both cases, you have to ensure that you are right now ready with digital, uh, ready with the guidelines. You have to accept these guidelines. So if you're not following these guidelines, you may have to pause your business and restart. Maybe last time it was not that clear. The guidelines had not come like this, but today it's very clear. We need to sort of uh, adhere and agree to that. Uh, I think uh, many of you would have already been in our previous session, so I will I'll keep pause. I will not go through too much of who we are and what we what we do. My name is Samir Singh Jenny, uh, and I'm part of the Digital Fifth uh, as a company. Uh, who we are and what we do, I think 30 seconds, not more than that. We are India's first and the largest fintech consulting firm. Uh, we may be the largest in Asia as well. Uh, I think uh, maybe in, in UK, we have a competitor there who does similar stuff in the re relevant business, but that's largely us. We are only in FinTech and digital finance and we don't operate outside. Uh, we have been growing all across. Uh, we have customers worldwide. In fact, we are gaining more traction. So you don't get to see Shashank today because he's traveling outside. And so I think we are getting, getting more traction outside the country as well. Uh, very decent on the network side and content side. So I, the fact that all of you are here in the call, uh, on the session says that we have a reach. Uh, of course, when we did this last event, we we ran out of space literally. Uh, we had almost 200 guys joining us for the previous uh, session on digital lending. Of course, most of you already know about it, so I won't go there. Uh, 
uh, these are some of the customers we work with almost all uh, kind all levels large banks small banks fintechs uh, uh, bureaus payment networks everybody in the market uh, as such and of course some of the governments as well uh, we do consulting partnership recruitment training if you have any consulting needs partnership needs in the market uh, if you are hiring people in the fintech domain or you want training uh, i think we can we can work it out and this is some of the work we do i'll i'll skip it now we also do hiring these are some of clients which for which uh, this is the training which we do i think the next training is start in maybe 2 3 months down the line but we if you have any requirement on this training you can let me know and these are some of the mandates we have on hiring side uh, if you have some mandates let us know uh, given that we have access to the market we can work out but let's come to the subject itself so i just as said uh, the guidelines are already out on digital lending uh, and uh, this document is available we'll share with you otherwise you can download from rbi as well uh, and and you can go ahead with it uh, in terms of as i said it is relevant for existing customers availing fresh loans or to new customers getting on board from the date of the circular so basically as of today uh, you need to ensure that you are fully compliant all the past loans which you already have those are the only loans you will get another 2 months 3 months uh, 3 months actually to comply with it, which means that if you have not done uh uh let's say for example you are you are collecting via your account you would not be able to collect via your account for your current customers after 30th of november if you are doing any part disbursement later on that has to be done directly from the lender perspective i am giving you the answer right now as a fintech if you are a bank of course you also have to adapt it right now right right here and that's the process you need to go through it as i said uh rbi did come back when they came back on 10th of august Uh, on the on the recommendation and all of that uh, i think the first one recommendation was accepted on with, with implement, Im, immediate implementation uh, the guidelines which has just come uh, which is this guideline is actually for annexure 1 okay annexure 1 which is what we are talking about annexure 2 they have only picked up one item the fldg item and they have tried to explain it again but god i don't am not my english is not that great not is my legal long language so great i just not able to interpret it as of now so if you have questions on fldg i'm all, also as clueless as uh, as any kid can be so i won't have a recommendation on that but other points are very well clarified as of now and of course annexure 3 is is recommendation for government to do but yeah so we need will focus on annexure 1 only critical and and that's what uh, they, uh, from a definition perspective they have tried to define that uh, there are regulated entities the lender uh, which is the regulated entity and their dls so every bank will have their own app for digital lending and that will come under uh, regulated entity and their digital lending applications uh, you have uh, then a structure of say uh, a lender type like a chit fund or a housing society or any any of now these they are definitely not part of the rbi framework and uh, of course they are not giving any guideline to them so whatever is relevant is for actually these entities and then these are the lsps or and the dls which is the uh fintechs which are not banks not nbfcs they are not regulated right now by rbi and these are the entities for which they have built a rule so lender type 1 and lender type 3 are actually uh un under this rbi regulation uh, as of now anybody who is in lender type 2 uh i think they will come under the central government or uh, state government framework and they will have to go through the same process with their regulators so this and this if you follow if you are a fintech you are under uh, control or if you are a bank or nbfc you will be have to follow the same process and uh, including uh, mfis as well so uh, rbi has again reiterated the same thing uh, you can't do third party collections and disbursement so lot of uh, fintechs actually get into uh, collect the money from the from the lender put into one account and disburse from that account or uh, you take the money on a pool basis that's not permitted uh that will not happen so you need to uh, how how quickly should we move i think uh, fintechs have to move right now right away even the banks have to move right now right away uh how should we do it uh, i think uh, you can go and ask for some permission to continue for a month or two but uh, my request is transition plan has to be done right away right now uh, and if you need obviously some help from our side let us know we can we can work it out uh fintechs cannot collect fees which means that uh, any fees which they charge directly to the firm or to the customer cannot happen so fintechs the, the the fee can only be collected by the regular entity so the payment has to be between a a, a, a fintech a, between a customer and the regular entity like a bank or nbfc and the, the fintech will not act also on a pass through basis 
Uh, RBI has also clarified last time when they did a key fact statement, they actually had linked it to a, a BC related document, a long old document. This time they revised it and you can have access to that. That's already part of the regulated doc the document which has come out. Uh, so you have to have a very clear key statement fact, uh, including um, all, all the aspects we are looking at. You need to have a cooling off period. I think, interestingly, cooling off period also has been defined that it cannot be less than three days. It cannot be less than three days if the duration is, I think, more than seven days, something like that. And it cannot be, uh, it can be not be less than one day uh, if it is seven day loan. So if it is less than seven days, less than seven days loan, one day is, is you have to give as a cooling off period. If it is, uh, it is longer duration product, then it should be maybe three days and not less than three days. How do you should decide that three days or five days or 10 days? That is the board of the, of the, of the company or regulated entity has to do it. RBI has, has ensured that there's a minimum barrier which they've created. They've not created a maximum barrier. Uh, another framework which we have been talking about that uh, on a when we have a credit card or kind of equivalent offering uh, the or fintechs when they offer to their customers, there's a, always a tendency that uh, they will give you uh, they will increase the uh, the amount of credit uh, on a regular basis on their own choice. Uh, I think that's something which we they have, they're not very keen on right now. So what they expect is that every time the uh, you have to increase uh, the amount you have to give uh, you, you have to request. Let's say, for example, my bank wanted to increase my limit from, let's say, 3 lakhs to 3 lakhs to 30,000. Uh, that process has to go through uh, the consent architecture. Uh, today, I, I can tell you that most fintechs earlier were not following this process. They were actually increasing the limit based on uh, how they saw the performance. So that has been come under control. And uh, uh, both REs uh, as well as regular entities as those fintechs will have to have a suitable a nodal grievance officer uh, who will have to manage all the kind of grievances, right? Uh, I think these are some of the points which have clearly come out. Any question anybody who have on this, uh, you can send on chat uh, as well, and I'll try to respond. Or if you have, if you, I mean, we can we can figure this out. So maybe request is if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, put on chat. I'll try to respond. Uh, yeah, and if I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know, right? Uh, it's not that we know we are supposed to know everything. We are you're all trying. Uh, and as much as we we all try, right? So any question from anyone right now? If you want to open up your screen and ask a question, that's also fine. Yeah, I think I, I saw a question coming up. Uh, I think uh, are PAPG considered as third party within the dispersal of or repayment of mechanism? So my understanding is that, uh, which is where the dispute is coming, is that in the whole framework, uh, even PAPGs may not be uh, included in that uh, as a as a party of the of the of the bank. So therefore, there's a uh, there's a request made by all the PAPGs saying that they can't be put outside. They should be considered as part of the framework so that they can actually manage the input and output, uh, inflow and outflow. So I think this issue exists. PAG, PAPG guys are not included in this process and how will it work? So typically you have a PAPG is collecting the money and dispersing it out, out there. That's also not going to work out as of now. Many of the PAPGs are also lenders in themselves. They have actually moved ahead from a PAG, PPG business to also lending to their customers. I think that is one of the reasons why it may have come under dispute. But any which way, right now they are not considered as, uh, uh, they are not part of the framework and they cannot uh, the transaction cannot be routed through them. It has to be directly between the, uh, the customer and the borrower. And uh, this, this discussion is still going on. Uh, you mentioned, uh, I think Pratik Mehta is asking, you mentioned deadline for new customer acquisition existing is today. Will REs pause business with fintechs? Uh, look, I'm not going to make such a stark statement, uh, but they have to put a journey to it, saying that how quickly they can come, bring it under control. Will it be fun, one day, two day, 10 day, 15 day? But uh, I think they have to come back uh, uh, quickly under this framework. Uh, now, uh, will it be a two month journey or three month journey or one week journey? I'm not here to uh, sort of speak about, but my gut feel says that uh, if you have to do it thoroughly, creating a, uh, let's say impact document, uh, figuring out who has what implications, how do you process it out. My take is that it's not less than two to three, four months. Uh, should they pause it or not? <laughs> I think it's too much of a call for me to tell. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. And, and I think uh, 
RBI might just be considered on that, but I get, I guess, uh, beyond uh, maybe my, and I'm not trying to give you any guidelines, but if you are caught with this situation, maybe in November and December, I think RBI will actually be very unhappy. So we need to be conscious about this, that we'll start doing business in the right way. And of course, you have to realize that these guidelines were already applicable for last three weeks. So the RBI has already come back saying that from a 10th day when they decided this, they told that it's valid uh, even now. It is a detailed guidelines or this is only a detailed guideline. And I don't think from a messaging perspective, they have changed much. Whatever was written uh, last time is what is written right now, not a much change. The only thing they've added is these clauses saying that uh, they are giving you extra time for only existing uh, loans uh, to be come under this uh, regulated framework. For uh, any new, they had to roll that day also, it's not, it's not going to work. Uh, how can another fintech partner with a uh, lending firm now for providing loans to their own customers? I think uh, uh, from a from a framework perspective, uh, all fintechs do that. Uh, they have to ensure that the money is does not get doubted through them. Uh, now, in terms of some uh, issues are there, for example, and we'll talk about it later. Uh, RBA doesn't say that you should not store customer data and you should have minimal data. But what if the customer is my own? And there, in those cases, for example, uh, will the largest e-commerce company will delete the customer details because they are lending to them through their partners? I think it's not going to work. So the use cases where it will be an issue will be embedded finance. There, my gut, my understanding would be if you can, you can, you can provision it, saying this is why you have stored this data because the customer belongs to you and you are right now operating on it uh, in multiple places. Maybe you will get uh, uh, a leeway. But if you are a fintech and you are not offering anything and you are doing digital lending and you are storing more data. Uh, I think that may not be something which uh, RBI may be very happy about. Okay, I've not heard anybody speaking. So at least, uh, uh, I, is it making sense? Maybe, maybe you can do a thumbs up or thumbs down uh, or maybe say uh, hands up because otherwise it's very difficult for me for you to figure out what's happening. Is it good, bad or ugly? Okay, so I'll continue the thread further. Uh, in terms of uh, data storage, which is the point I was just saying, is that uh, RBI have come back in saying that uh, data collected by uh, any of these apps should be need-based, uh, there should be clear audit and explicit consent taking. So you need to be able to provision for it. This is, a, this is how banks typically operate. If you, if you read any of the RBI uh, regulations for any, any bank, that's how they operate. They go through any process. I remember launching my mobile banking app. Everything has to be followed. Every every whatever T has to be crossed or whatever I has to have a dot, all of that. So that's the same thing they are making it applicable for them. Uh, and uh, I think in terms of uh, borrowers, they have also made it slightly more complicated. Uh, they can deny consent, which is fine, but they can revoke previously granted consent. So you need to have saying what data you can store. I can come back and saying, okay, I do not give you consent anymore. So you need to remove that. And they're also saying that they may ask you to delete their additional data. Uh, and, and from a DLA or LSP. Now, this is very, very similar uh, framework to what uh, when we think about uh, uh, when we think about when we tell uh, from a from a Google perspective that forget me and all which whatever we're speaking about. I think this is this is more from a data perspective saying that uh, data privacy should be there. And they're saying that, okay, you should be able to delete it. Technically, that is, should be valid for all kinds of framework, but incidentally, uh, if you walk into a branch and your data can be stored, if you are on digital, it should not be stored. It's again a discrepancy, but so be it, right? And that's what they say. Uh, next, in, in terms of uh, regulatory aspect, uh, what they're saying is that uh, lending source from DLA, uh, uh, which is digital lending app, uh, either of RE or LSP engaged by RE, uh, what it basically means that any app uh, should report uh, any kind of loan, uh, short term, long term, any duration uh, to the credit information co uh, companies, CICs, right? What it means to uh, what it means to you is simple. Uh, please ensure, please, please, please ensure that if it is uh, if it is BNPL, you can call whatever you want. Every kind of loan, every kind of loan has to be reported. You really can't get away saying that I will not report because. Uh, because because of some reason, this or that, you can't really do that. Uh, so please, I'm sure that uh, that that framework is taken care of. Uh, so if you are you're doing BNPL of 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, all of that will come under this radar.
any so am i clear bnpl is also under the same radar okay uh, just one second okay uh, now uh, this is the same point they are clearly calling out the new digital lending products extended by regulated entities over merchant platforms involving short term credit or deferred payments are required to be reported to by to cs so which was saying usa uh, in the merchant side merchant is doing delayed payment so they have clearly called that deferred payments will also come under this framework right uh, this is the initial one which they have completely approved uh, this is more detailing of whatever i spoke about uh, so let's go with item by item we already spoke that all the money transactions all the money transactions should always be between the bank and the borrower or nbfc and the borrower loan repayment and disbursement uh the even the fee payment will happen from a bank and nbfc to uh, fintech also disbursement will happen the only the information will go back to them but any kind of exception maybe there will be some exception like a co lending or say maybe some exception where for example uh, end use is is actually the payment is made to merchant maybe a e-commerce pay transaction i think we need to find more details about that uh, but my take overall uh, operations will become more complicated uh, the transparency will come but it will be very very complicated from a from a customer perspective from a platform perspective right now bank and nbfc may not have the tech platforms ready to handle all of that load so i think they will have to build improve their uh, platforms uh, they also have to uh, uh, sort of communicate more and more information back to uh, fintech which means that they are uh, this year making engine and platforms and processes and los lms should be good enough to manage all of that i'm really worried that can they do it or not uh, in terms of los lms i said very complicated now uh, is it right for the customer answer is yes i'm not denying but it is will be complicated because Uh, one of the reason why fintechs came is because backends of banks could not handle in all these scenarios, and now we are back to the square one. They are expecting the backends to do it. I don't know how it will take, how much time will it take. Also, in terms of capital flows, uh, I think the whole money is flowing outside. So fintechs will get information back. They will, but they will have challenges in getting getting their fees back and all of that because uh, technically uh, that's how. Uh, uh, lenders do they retain money for a longer period of time. So I think they'll have challenges in. as they do not have control on capital flows also uh, they cannot receive directly any fees so their revenues will come down to some extent here and there i do think so and customer will not pay any excess fees so today from a customer perspective is all good i don't think any of these regulation will have direct adverse impact the only impact would be that what what if fintechs do not uh, will, are, are not able to handle all these complication and slow down on lending or shut their shop and go i think uh, then finally the if you kill innovation too much the customers will not get service as well so i think uh, overall my take is that all all fintechs will now given that these complicated regulation the processes will tend to become nbfc or of, of their own uh, smaller fintechs will get uh, again uh, will have to get scale fast it will be very complicated for them to spend that much of effort so they may actually get acquired or or a close shop i'm talking about lending guys very small who are not been build to build so much cannot spend so much of money into getting audits done <clears throat> uh and uh, what if the fintechs are also doing other services like travel or e-commerce or something else <clears throat> i'm talking about embedded finance how will it work uh another thing which we don't know is that uh, can borrowed have a full kyc pps we don't have an answer i i also have to double click on it further to see what is the meaning of it uh i i know some questions are coming up i'll i'll pick it up uh, in in some time i'll come back uh they will come back clearly on api structure so i this structure is just an example of it loan look at it but they have come back with api structure what they are saying is that uh whatever is the rate which is there uh, that should be clearly called out uh, and it should be analyzed uh, so what happens is that we sometimes say uh, 2% flat on a monthly basis but for 2% flat on a monthly basis for 6 months can be brutally high number right and then you charge 2% processing fee as well so it might come out to be uh, maybe 30% 50% 80% so rbs clearly called out that apr will ensure that customers get to understand what rate they are going for and some of these for the customers may also understand that the rate which they have to pay is fairly high so we do believe that when you make apr very explicit and very clear to the customer 
you may have a definitely reduction in customers buying your services uh, as such. So I think there'll be reduction because of APR. A lot of short-term lending is done at a ex ex exceedingly high rates. Um, and uh, that will come under radar. But I don't know, uh, uh, when you look at uh, interchain on payment, and that's something which is a dispute for years, and I have be, always been saying that we should have a low interchange as such. Uh, I think interchange is also a set of interest rate, which the issuer is charging for just maybe one day of transaction or one minute of transaction. So I think that we also come under it, but it's more of a joke than anything else uh, that, yeah, what if there's an APR for uh, interchange and then you'll realize that uh, how exorbitant it can get even for uh, one second transaction which is debited into my account i may be paying maybe uh, one percent to my own bank ridiculous right but anyways that everybody knows how critical i am that uh, that particular process but anyway uh, i think there has to be clear uh conditions for for uh, recovery uh grievance officer all the details uh cooling period has also been documented i'll talk about that in terms of recovery, who's going to recover? What is the role of the recovery? Uh, it has to be communicated upfront to the uh, to the customer by the by the bank or NBFC. Today, in many cases, bank and NBFC may not be communicating it. Very interestingly, this is not uh, relevant as such for a coal lending business. And in coal lending business, the partner is supposed to take care of everything, right? Uh, where the statement has to go from their side. So this is completely ulta. In co-lending, you the the partner actually takes care of the entire communication. But in case of uh, fintech where the the it is maybe the relationship is only uh, as, as a as a partner uh, you are not supposed to do it so in the agreement itself uh, the bank or nbfc has to communicate to the farmer that boss uh, who's what is the what is the uh, the who is the recovery agent and uh, what is the responsibility and all of that you have to tell if there's any change in in uh, this framework <clears throat> you need to quickly uh, communicate to the customer as well uh, exactly SOP they will build when only when they have a SRO coming in um, and we'll talk about SRO later basically a, a, a group which will get created or, or 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 entity which will get created which will get set regulations at the at, at the at the at the industry level so are we saying I'll not go on the ground but the way MFIN once works for a BC business they will expect you to do the same thing uh, and, and run on their own. This is microfinance runs MFIN kind of framework, right? So I think that's what they are saying that maybe you can do that on your own. Uh, from an outsourcing perspective, I think if you are you're looking at guidelines, you should look at uh, already uh, uh, a new regulation which come uh, on the responsibilities of regulated entities employing recovery agents. There is a regulation which came recently and you can use that. Uh, in terms of also, uh, there's a framework which says that you should have a nodal officer. So REs as well as FinTech should have a nodal officer and they should solve all the problems. Now, cooling period also has been defined uh, here, which was not earlier defined. Uh, this period should not be less than three days for loans that are of seven days and more. So which means that if you have anything more than seven days on, uh, they say even two years, one year, you can you have to give in a minimum of three days of cooling period or a, or a lookup look period. And uh, also they're saying that if the if there is a seven day loan, uh, you have to give at least one day of loan, one day of tenor for uh, looking period. So they've defined it uh, in the previous avatar, it was uh, it was not there. Uh, in terms of, because all of that happens, uh, because in the, in the cooling off period, you may have charged upfront the processing fee, you may actually end up returning it as well. So be careful that uh, when the transactions are reversed, you actually have to pay back to the customer slightly more because even the process has to be returned as well. Now, last time when we when I said that uh, you may you may the the, the customers may uh, interpret as a BNPL and cancel it between, I think unlikely. Uh, last time when they wrote, uh, they said the the this uh, look-in period will be anywhere between three to fourteen days, uh, but they have defined it minimum of three days and more. I'm sure any bank and nbfc will not make it a 14 days so they've clearly called out that's three days and that's about it right so we need to figure out uh we, we there's no chance of too many guys misusing it because three days is very very low but technically what will happen uh is that at least maybe one to five percent of loans may can get cancelled during the journey uh after disbursement and that that will increase the cost of the lending to the to the bank uh overall cost will have to be will increase for the lender and of course, the bureaus will have to reset their systems to align with this rate change, right? Because bureaus will have problem. They don't. They would not know how to handle these transactions. So bureaus will also have to build a process for return of loan, uh, which is not, uh, which has to be designated separately. 
how and why, what we will do to do that. I'm sure RBA must be talking to the bureaus already, and maybe this, these are things in progress. I think we already spoke about uh, because of whatever they have spoken about key statement, uh, key fact statement. Uh, I think there will be a lot of extra work on the bank and NBFC to ensure that transparency created. Uh, they will have to also put separate processes, plan for it. There will be a slightly increase in cost of doing business. Um, and uh, I think because of lookup period, uh, the money will come back to them and they will have to manage the uh, liquidity issue as well. What if you disperse one crore and that comes back next day? It's painful because it will be valid even for if the if the the money is uh, money is sort of sourced uh, primarily online uh, on on even for home loans. Uh, we had I think uh, so we spoke about all the points as such uh, uh, already, and uh, I think my sense is that because of these problems and all of that, uh, generically complications and all of that, uh, and then you have to have tell APR for uh, even ten days loan very clearly. I think there will be a tendency to go for bigger ticket loans also for slightly longer duration. That's my take on it. Uh, I'll pause for a moment uh, and uh, take some questions and go back. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I, I think so I saw some questions. Let me try to respond back on them. Uh, okay, so uh, I think Neeraj is asking besides uh, accept, revoke and delete consent uh, option, does customer data in system have some certain vintage and after expiry of that, will automatically get deleted? I think uh, you, if you are to look at that, you should look at RBI guideline, which says that I think you should store data for, I guess, seven years. I may be wrong. It may have become 10 years as well, but uh, there's a clear guidelines that RBI may come back and do an audit for you and you, they, will, they will look at data as far back as seven to 10 years. So I think seven years is the number, but uh, you can correct somebody who has been um, onto it right now. I used to run this business for maybe a few years back myself, hands on. So this is what I remember, but of course, uh, as of now, process the duration may have increased. We don't we don't have increased. Um, the next question is: Does escrow account under NBFC ownership pa uh, count as a pass through or direct? I think if it is under our NBFC uh, ownership, it should pass through. But I am again. Uh, this is again a point which keeps coming up in many of my sessions. Uh, I think uh, I'm not such a big uh, escrow escort. I we are doing it with some some client right now. I I know that how it works, but uh, if there is a touch point by somebody, it may. So basically, it depends on how the account is structured. Uh, and since there is also a framework that uh, PAPGs are not coming under that framework, how will it work has to be defined. Uh, so account has to be completely uh, owned by uh, by that uh, fintech, and for that maybe they have to open a separate account on which they will put all the controls and processes. So we need to see how it works, uh, but it, it may be some escrow accounts will be permitted and some may not be. We need to be more kosher than uh, we would earlier. I think uh, Meet company is asking what happens in RE uh, to RE lending. I have no idea what the question is. Um, I have no idea what the question is. Uh, what is the, what happens to in uh, regulated, uh, to regulated entities to regulated, I don't know. So, uh, okay. okay. So maybe you are asking ARI to ARI, or oh, sorry, my mistake. I think that will be co-lending, right? Uh, can you do uh, only a pass-through end-to-end? I, I I think that will that will be potentially possible, uh, but <clears throat> all the controls have to be exactly the same way. So if you do uh, 100 is to 0, 0 is to 100 in that framework, I, I think that you need to ensure that uh, 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 you follow all the regulations which are documented here. But of course, co-lending may, it will be inverse. You can manage all the process. So you need to figure out what works better for you. If you don't have capital, you may end up do, doing this RE to RE as well. Uh, and then many of these uh, banks and fintechs uh, do this relationship as well. Uh, is uh, API collection now reducing balance ROI plus fees? Okay, I will not define that out. I think uh, I didn't get sufficient time to uh, put the right formula in, but we'll get that across to you in some time. But yeah, it's always been reducing balance and my understanding. And then there's also a fees uh, also has to be included. So one thing very clearly they've said is that you can't keep any kind of processing fee or any kind of other fees and convenience fee outside. They have to be put inside the the documentation in the X calculation. So that's how they've said. Yeah, so I think Manish Thakwani is asking that uh, there are some clarification given by RBA today on month's uh, digital lending regulation. Are you going to talk about these? Uh, like they have given time to lenders to implement these by 
uh, November 30th, uh, 2020. I think that's what I said uh, when we started. So we've not uh, done full impact analysis, but my understanding of whatever a quick read I had on item by item, uh, there is not uh, much of an issue with that. Uh, other than FLDG, they have not called out anything. Uh, and of course, in terms of November uh, uh, 30th, uh, uh, all those points which I have put in the deck as well. So when we when you when we'll share the deck back, you you can pick it up. We already spoke about it that this is relevant in what Q's case and what not. What Q's is not relevant. Uh, my suggestion again is to if you could uh, give us uh, your your feedback as well. Uh, we'll be very happy uh, and, and improve. I think we got a feedback last time that many of you had come back saying that we can have one more clarification session on uh, this framework. So that's how why I came back uh, for this session. Uh, last time already we had 200, 200 plus people joining us. So I think uh, we'll do that. Uh, if there's no more question, I will proceed back uh, and speak about the other pointers which have come. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, just to ensure that uh, this point which came uh, from a relevancy perspective, uh, just one sec. So basically, this is the document uh, we were we, we were actually uh, reading in last an hour or two just before the session, uh, where we are saying that how it were the timelines out there. And if you look at that, uh, we were talking about here uh, an extra one uh, in this in this circular, which came a few days back, and that is what has been uh, completely accepted. Now this whole document is actually an extra one ka implementation, right? How it will going to work. Uh, what is the scope and what all is relevant for and all of that so everything is there i think somebody was asking me that uh it will 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 a payments bank be included no payments bank will not be included at least i can't figure out how and why they can be included they have defined every point very clearly here uh you should have a look at it uh not a very complicated document to read uh after hopefully my session uh you if you have any problem in reading through this document you'll find it very easy every clause has been clearly called out uh, and and documented, for example, fees and charges. How it will be uh, will be directly paid by the. For example, they has to ensure that any fees, charges, and payable to L LSPs are paid directly to them and not charged by LSPs to borrow. Very clear English. I think uh, earlier I had a bit of complaint that uh, some of the language is too difficult for us to read, but that they have improved uh, and they have sort of made it easy. Fee and interest charges. Uh, they basically have clearly called out that uh, such should be understood upfront. And on the analyst based on as, as part of the uh, key facts uh, statement, so clearly they have called out what how it is calculated, uh, what what is APR, all of that has been documented. So we need to and if some of those APR structure is already there on RBI guidelines because every even even uh, credit cards, every lenders, even banks have to already follow. It. It's not net new, so we can pick it up some of the elements from that document itself, right? Uh, we spoke about it. Uh, just one sec. Yeah. So there was a, they were talking about uh, how the commission will go. So they've called out that all information on uh, document sharing, document sign off will have to be messaged directly from banks and NBFCs, uh, directly to the borrower. And uh, uh, I think from a fintech perspective, they are they are supposed to be a messenger at best, but direct message has to go directly between these. Uh, between a bank and 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 the borrower, it's a very simple similar framework which for which neo banks do even now. They follow all the guidelines because uh, they are very tight. If if you look at savings and current account guidelines, are very very tight, and therefore they they followed this to the T. And even if any of the banks, anybody would have opened an account with any of the neo banks, they would have seen messages coming back from bank uh, on account opening or in, or KYC and all. So they are saying key fact statement. Summary of product, cycle letter, all of that has to be shared by the bank to the fintech uh, upfront. There's also a discussion clearly, I spoke earlier, that uh, any kind of uh, 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 line of credit uh, or BNP which is given, uh, they cannot be in limit increase without consent. We spoke about it earlier. Uh, they also calling out that uh, the, the underwriting should be auditable uh, and clearly auditable and, and accountable. So. What is the criteria you took to underwrite the customer? I still remember my um, my old days, uh, six, seven years back when fintechs were coming. Even those days, the discussion was fintechs will tell that don't look at it. I'll give you uh, FLDG. Don't even look at your data and, and you should be happy. And then I met bankers being so happy about free money, right? Saying I'm able to make 2%, 3% without any capital uh, getting levied. I think those days are all over. 
they've clearly called out that boss take care of it underwriting show me the underwriting and if we ever find you not following you will be fined as well and rbi fines very very ruthlessly um uh, there are uh, regular entries. So today, you, uh, I think you maybe a year or two back, there was a regulation which came that every fintech has to ensure that on their website, they will tell who their partners are. I think reverse was not true. On the bank's platform, platform it was not written what are the fintechs. So then they have come back and saying, every bank or NBFC has to ensure that all partner names are there on their website. Uh, I think uh, this is something very, very crucial. I think this is where uh, I think challenges have happened. And we need to be conscious. And RBI has also clarified that, boss, I will go after your blood with this. You need to ensure that when you onboard any LSP, which is a fintech, you do technical cap capabilities, due diligence, data privacy laws, processes, all of that. You, you need to ensure that you, you do a complete D D DD on your partner rather than saying, let's get aggressive and let's go live, right? I think the from a security process perspective, it'll be it has to be done. Now, what it does to the business is, it is makes it uh, more expensive for banks to onboard a fintech and it, it makes uh, so there is a immature or early stage fintech cannot onboard a bank let me put it like that early stage fintechs will find it very difficult to onboard a bank because it is going to take tough time to put security process and all of that ready for a bank level now is it right or wrong i think technically it is right but i i really feel for early stage startups who don't have enough money who are not funded how will they cater to it i don't know and therefore, there's a chance that uh, the, there will be slowdown of uh, innovation now because it's getting tighter and tighter. Uh, RBI has not any released any DD, due diligence guidelines, but my sense is that they already have given a guidelines for NBFCs to outsource or a bank to outsource. And all those regulations will still be relevant. So I think you can pick up these guidelines uh, and consume. Keep sending your questions and also please give, give giving us a feedback. Uh, as I keep telling every time, when you, if you ask me in this document, we'll share it back. If you give a feedback to our, our form, please go ahead and that do that. Uh, of course, this document itself will remember further because guidelines have just come. We have made uh, minor iterations or changes to this document. Uh, we have to still see further if there's anything else we can pick up. But yeah, you should get something out, uh, maybe uh, latest by in a day or two. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is also important that uh, regulated entities have to ensure that they, the LSPs are do not store, store uh, data beyond what is minimal. This is the beyond minimal is not known. What is the meaning of minimal? So that problem statement still remains. Even in this document which came, uh, there's, there's no definition of what it is and it's very difficult to define. So there'll be issue and they also have to create a period of review, which means that they have to do audits. The way uh, banks today audit uh, uh, their, their payment switch the way they audit their outsourcing uh, offices, same way they have to audit very deeply. So I think basic of, uh, we, we don't know what is the definition of minimal data cell so issues. Um, and also uh, LSPs, if they don't store enough data, they will not be able to handle the customer inquiries really well. So I don't know how it's going to work, but I, I think uh, uh, there has to be a way out and whatever it is, it will be not that easy for somebody to put that process in. I think, uh, uh, is there a clean way of doing implementing end-to-end I don't know. Okay, it will be 80-90% correct, but there'll be still, still some issues. Uh, you have to live with it because it's 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 like this. You have to go become a DSA, becoming become becoming without becoming a digital partner. You can't have data, but you have to take care of it. You can't have do this, but you should do this. I think it is that that is a that is an issue. I, I I still believe that they would have given a proper license to them and made their life simpler. Uh, but uh, I think we've gone to us other extent. We have made it worse for them. Uh, maybe RBI wants us everybody to go and become a regulated entity or NBFC, and then they are under their direct regulation. They will be happy doing it. But yeah, um, they're also saying that when you onboard a customer, uh, you can actually, uh, and this is applicable for any app. So it's not really a fintech app or a bank app. You can actually pick up data for KYC purposes on 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 real time. So this is also to ensure that the video KYC does not fail. So they are allowing you to do access to uh, sort of camera, microphone, location, uh, but they, which is which rest all they are trying to remove so that you can't use this data for other functions. Uh, there also has to be uh, policy guidelines. They have called out for storage of customer data, type of data can be held, restrictions and all of that. Yeah. Spanish, please. Okay. Uh, 
the type of data which can be handled, length of data, uh, time uh, data can be handled, all the regulations already there with it. I think somebody was asking about this guidelines, it's already there. Uh, and that has to be documented and should be available on uh, the app uh, side. And the uh, biometric side, I, I, I don't know how it is going to play. I know it's not really correct, but sometimes they do uh, store. I'm not be accurate all the time. But yeah, there's a pointer on that. Nobody can store a biometric data on the app itself. Uh, there has to be a state level coordination committee. It doesn't matter. I think I'm not going there. Uh, I think that's something which will happen. Uh, there has to be a tech and data compliances. So all the uh, requirements on security and all will have to be done. Uh, data cannot be stored in India. This already called out even in in uh, earlier cases. And and RBI can be ruthless, right? You know that they 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 did not allow a yeah, MasterCard and MX to, or to operate in India for a long time. So they will be ruthless, be told, be aware that RBI will not leave it uh, as such. We spoke about the BNPLPs. I think I, I just to repeat that uh, bureaus uh, will, will, will have to, so you need to ensure that any short term loan BNPL will be coming under uh, a lending. So therefore you need to do a KYC process and all of that. And also you need to uh, uh, do a bureau reporting for that. Now, how would it happen and how will it work out? I don't know. Uh, I typically also, uh, in, in, in the last six months, I would have defaulted on uh, at least three to four uh, BNPLs I would have taken. It's logical because you don't remember that 100 or 50 rupees you would not pay. But if it is bureau directly and if it does the way it is does, I think it will be a killer, right? So I think people will be scared of taking a BNPL if it hits them very hard. So I think that's something which bureaus have to understand how they will sort of govern it. Uh, but I think... Uh, I also believe that a BNPL will be a difficult business to do. And uh, we won't say see people doing a 200, 300 rupees BNPL. Uh, they'll become much larger because the cost of doing business is not less than 100, 150 rupees, 200 rupees. Uh, you need to do a KYC, digital KYC. You need to do Aadhaar piece and this piece, and it's going to be tough. I think I'll pause now. Uh, the only thing which I, I'll, I'll talk about here, I think uh, rest all, they've not come back clearly. Uh, but they have called out uh, FLDG. I will not talk about other things. They have called out FLDG. And they are still told that it's re they, you should refer to securitization of or standard assets. And that's what they have linked to. Uh, now, uh, my challenge is, uh, how does it work? Like, if you look at FLDG. So if you look at FLDG, they are saying, as per the industry practice offering financial products involving contractual agreements such as FLDG, in which third-party guarantees to compensate up to a certain percent of default in known portfolio of the RE, it is advised that RE will shall adhere to the provisions of master direction on uh, on on uh, uh, on securitization. Right now, if I go through it and I talk about synthetic securitization, look, I I, I couldn't interpret, and I know I'm part of so many senior groups, and nobody could interpret that as well. So I think we'll have to reach out to RBI and ask these questions uh, as such. But let's see how it goes from there. Uh, there are more pointers which are exist today, but uh, I'll take some more questions. Uh, I think, uh, and also look for your more feedback. So let me just see what questions has come. Uh, what if the uh, so this question from Vibor Jain? Uh, what if the customer lead is originated by aggregator, not specifically for one lender partner? Would they still need to purchase the customer's personal information or any credit assessment LSP has done in the uh, in the, on the on the customer, right? Uh, so you're saying that aggregator has taken the customer and it's done for, done for one partner. Okay. Uh, uh, do they need to purge their data? Look, it, it depends on what situation you are in. Uh, it's, that's what I'm saying is very, uh, when you're doing embed finance, look, you, have, you, you really can't purge data. But if you're an aggregator and you are onboarding the customer on your portal for multiple reasons, should you be deleting it? It's a question you have to ask. Now, what if I delete? Uh, just imagine any portal, and I'm not name any because that will become very ridiculously difficult for anyone to, I mean, I'm made to explain to them, they are all my friends. Let's say if some portal is there and uh, has done all the stuff to onboard you and all of that, and then you come across to me and saying, delete everything. So which means that every customer will be deleted. So highly unlikely, I think they have to find ways and means to exist. Otherwise, we are saying all anybody who collects any data of the customer of any type will be deleted because you might lend some time time. So I don't think it will work like that, but uh, if I read uh, in, in, in letter and words and spirit, nobody can store data. So therefore you can't originate customer. Like how would you do it? It's a reverse loop. If you lend uh, to someone, you have to read everything you have on personal data. How will it work? No, it doesn't work like that. How do I communicate to them? It's not going to work. So I think that's, that's those are the issues, but we have to live with it. 
Uh, regulations are always like that. Uh, when you try to apply, some work, some don't work. Happy to take you more questions. Uh, I think uh, whatever I know, I have shared back. Uh, I know I could. I was thinking earlier of uh, making uh, uh, making a longer session, but I short, shortened it because if there is, I thought maybe we will focus more on questions. So, but yeah, happy to take more questions uh, if there are any. And if there are any feedback, please share it that on the link back. You can even put your videos on and ask questions, please. If there are none, then uh, we'll pause now. Uh, we'll come back with a uh, with with new set of uh, 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 maybe webinars. Uh, there's RBS recently come back with the uh, with the regulation or or at least feedback form where you're saying how should payments be charged and how credit should credit cards be charged. So we'll come back on that. There's also a credit card related uh, deep regulation. We'll come back on that. So if there is anything specific you would like us to cover uh, in the uh, in the future webinars, please let us know. We'll work on it. With this, thank you. Thanks a lot. And see you.